Tour. The riders will face the longest stage of the week today, 150 kilometres from here in Atherston to Royal Leamington Spa. So how will they be feeling after yesterday's efforts? As the nation went to the polls, the question in Stoke was whether anyone had the strength to take the leadership of the race from the impressive WM3 rider Kasia Neodoma, who set the pace on the opening day. As expected, there were early attacks in stage two, but no one group was able to establish anything like a gap until Anna Trevisi of Ail Cipollini and Alison Jackson of B Pink worked well to build up a lead of a minute and a half. However, they were fast approaching the first iceberg sprint and the peloton upped the pace. The two held on for the sprint points with WNT rider Katie Archibald leading the group at Roaster to take third. Six riders jumped clear before the second of the day's sprints. All the big teams represented and the points in Cheadle went to Bulls Dolman's Christine Majerus. The decisive move of the stage was likely to come during the tough two climbs towards the end of the day. And at the first Skoda, Queen of the Mountains at Ipstones, Lucinda Brand of Sunweb attacked the leading group to go clear. And she built up a decent lead to also secure the second Queen of the Mountains points at Gun Hill. So where are we going to see another solo stage win? Well, the chasers had her in their sights and Brandt was caught with seven kilometres to go by a chasing group of 18 riders, including the race leader, Nia Doma, but significantly missing last year's winner, Lizzie Dignan. And it's Peters then that hits the front right on time. And Peters is going to swing round that left-hander and she'll see the line and takes the stage. Peters takes it then from Anna Barnes with Ellen van Dijk coming in third. WM3 dominates the top of the general classification. Kasia Neodoma, 1 minute 46 ahead of Mariana Voss, with Canyon Schram's Hannah Barnes in third place. Ellen van Dijk and yesterday's stage winner Amy Peters a further two seconds back. So no real change at the top of the general classification, but Rochelle, plenty of movement behind Kasia Neodoma. What were your thoughts on yesterday's stage? It was another really unpredictable stage. It didn't really go to the plan. Uh, we thought that it would be, you know, another breakaway or hard, one of the hardest days yesterday. Uh, we saw that long breakaway from Lucinda Brand, um, Team Sunweb, and a really strong team. And another strong rider that you wouldn't normally let go up the road, and she nearly made it home. But uh, Amy Peters came home for bowls, which I think is really good after they had a disappointing first day. They won the stage uh, yesterday and then stage two. So uh, a great win by Amy Peters in the sprint. But the surprise for me yesterday, or the really impressive ride, was Hannah Barnes coming in second, moving up to third on GC and taking the best rider's uh, British jersey from her sister. And I think also what we saw was Kasia Neodoma backing up really well. She rode on her own for a long time on the opening day, yet she came in fifth and still is holding on quite comfortably to that green jersey. Yeah, and I think that she really is capable of holding on to it. A lot of people were questioning how much work she did on the first day. She really did it the hard way to put herself in a winning position. But uh, she's a rider that can every year run top 10 in the Giro d'Italia. So I think she's got the stamina to hold on to this jersey. And obviously she hasn't got a really strong team in depth in numbers, but she's got Mariana Voss by her side, and I think that means a lot. OK, we're into stage three territory now. Let's take a look at what the riders will be facing in Warwickshire today. Stage three is the longest of this year's tour at 151 kilometres. From Atherstone, the route heads south through Warwickshire, taking in iceberg sprints at Kenilworth and Wellsbourne. Edge Hill is the first Skoda Queen of the Mountains climb, and it's quickly followed by the second at Burton Dasset, before a mad dash to the finish in Royal Leamington Spa. Atherston is a picturesque market town situated in North Warwickshire on what was the old Roman road of Watling Street. The town is famous for the annual Shrove Tuesday ball game that's been played out along the main street since the 12th century. Royal Leamington Spa boasts dramatic Regency architecture and picturesque parks and gardens, but the town is best known for its waters. The Royal Pump Rooms and Baths were opened in the 19th century and attracted visitors from far and wide hoping to improve their health by bathing in the salty spa water, something the riders might want to take advantage of after a hard day in the saddle. So over 150 kilometres for the riders today, and Rochelle, the sun is shining, a little bit breezy, but they'll be very pleased the rain clouds aren't in. 
Yeah, I think they will be pleased that there's uh, one less challenge. The distance of today's stage, a lot of riders have been talking about, and obviously they've already raced two days, so they're feeling very tired. But uh, this is a particularly long stage for women, and uh, it's been a demanding tour. So I think there's a lot of riders out there uh, hoping that it's not as aggressive as it has been the last couple of days. But this is what they wanted to do with this race, isn't it? They wanted to make it challenging. They wanted to extend it. They've got ambitions to extend it even further, just to show that they, we have got a very, very competitive professional women's peloton. Yeah, I mean, the, the riders demanded it be harder but uh, you know that's, that's uh, how it is and now that they're uh, extremely tired and it's a very long stage today that um, they're hoping for a sprint I think a lot of riders will want to take it you know a little bit easy they know that uh, tomorrow is also going to be very tough maybe the toughest of the uh, stage race so I think we might see a sprint today. Do you think Bulls Dillmans again will look to try and do something a disappointing race perhaps from them uh, from the outset? Well, they, I think they probably a little bit disappointed in being on the back foot after the first day, but they uh, managed to get the stage win with Amy Peters yesterday. So that may have lifted their morale. Uh, Lizzie Diagnan looks to be um, a little bit under her best at the moment. We uh, haven't seen her really, you know, get out there and do some attacking and uh, be aggressive. So we might see something from her today, but she can also sprint as well. So the team might might put the effort into getting her to the finish today. Although she probably has one eye on tomorrow's stage as well. Not so much in the way of uh, mountains today, it's much flatter, but a really interesting course coming up. Let's just find out what the teams and the riders are saying about this one. Wind will be, as we talked about yesterday, so it will be headwind more or less from the start, but you will have some sections with some crosswind. The circuit is not that hard today, so I'm, I'm quite sure with the, the condition that Kiu is in that, uh, that she can survive the climbs and be ready for a sprint. So uh, yeah, we're excited about that. So then the two climbs we talked about yesterday, coming uh, really short after each other, set 112 and 122. The first one is really, really steep, 15% with the max. So the team has the mountains jersey with Audrey Cordon Rago. And what do you want to go away from the tour with? What will leave you satisfied? Uh, for sure, uh, the, the mountain jersey is a nice uh, reward and it's important for our sponsors with the uh, Wiggle uh, here in the UK. So, so um, ending with a shirt uh, in London would be uh, perfect and uh, hopefully also a stage win. I was very happy with yesterday. I think it was good for the team when we won the stage and I hope we can keep it going like this. You think it would be an attacking day today? Um, yeah, I think we need to have a look how the stage goes, how the whole peloton wants to go right, and when maybe it is aggressive, we can try something, but if we see, you don't know it, it's such a hard stage, it's up and down the whole time, a lot of wind every day, so we need to see uh, what's coming. Many predicting a, a bunch of sprint, how do you see this, this one playing out today? I don't know. It's going to be a bunch sprint. Uh, I see a lot of teams want to attack, want to avoid a bunch sprint, want to uh, go for a breakaway and with the win today. Um, I see a group coming into the line, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be a bunch sprint. So will we see Katia Neodoma still in that green oval energy leader's jersey at the end of today? Who knows? And of course, Hannah Barnes wearing that Adnams Best of British jersey so far. The fact that she is third in the GC, how does that affect her race? Does she change her mentality now that she is up there with the leaders? Well, I think absolutely. I mean, she has with Canyon Tram a really, really strong team. Uh, we wouldn't have predicted that Hannah Barnes would be their GC rider, but she's now sitting third on GC. And while she has that Best British jerseys, uh, uh, riders jersey I think that third place on GC is worth the whole team putting the effort into keeping her there because it's a prestigious race it offers a lot of points world tour uh, so I think third on GC has to be the priority for that team and for Hannah Barnes now and we know that she'll get tremendous support through Warwickshire uh, all the British riders in fact the whole peloton getting tremendous support here haven't they they have and uh, for Hannah Barnes it's a particularly special race because she won her first UCI race uh, here uh, two years ago so I think uh, she'll be lifted by the crowd and I think that with all the team behind and now being leader on the road at a World Tour race for your team is something pretty special. It is indeed. Okay, let's get this one underway then. Stage three with commentary from Hugh Porter and Sharon Laws. Thanks very much indeed, Jill. We're in Atherston today and this is the longest stage. It'll take the riders through to Royal Leamington Spa 
just over 150 kilometers so a lot of racing ahead of the competitors still ahead is Nui Adoma who leads by 1 minute and 46 seconds uh, over Mariana Voss and Hannah Barnes and then there's two more at 148 that's Ellen Van Dijk and Amy Peters and if you go down to 17th spot that's Flordy Mackay she's only two minutes and six back so there's a lot to play for yeah, and you can see here we've got a great shot of the jerseys. Um, on the left, we've got Anna van der Breggen. and she's wearing the Women's World Tour jersey in purple. Just behind her was Cecile Ludwig, and she's wearing the under-23 Women's World Tour jersey. Well, look at the school children here. They've turned out in there on the floor. Must have been a touch of wheels. Yeah, there's some really big riders down there. Looks like Elisa Borghini with wig Wiggle High Five in the black jersey. Maybe Chantal Black there, Bulls Dolmans. So riders from Ayla Cipollini in there as well. Quite a cluster of riders down. And uh, Borghini, well, looks like the doctor's uh, giving her attention at the moment. That's a real problem. That's Travisi there, the Italian, on the Ayla Cipollini squad. And she looks very, very uncomfortable. Yes, and this is a real panic for them. It's The adrenaline's going. They want to get back on the bike. But you also have to assess how injured they are. Well, that's Clara Koppenberg. Look at the shorts. And she's took a whack on the knee as well. So let's hope she's OK to uh, resume in the race. Good to see glorious sunshine today after a lot of the rain we've experienced in the early stages. Well, great shot there of Kenilworth Castle. And we're getting close to the first sprint today in the Iceberg Sprints classification. Yeah, and I think there's everything to play for in this sprint because, of course, as well as the points, there's also seconds up for it. And you can see now Sunweb on the front really driving this. Another retirement, uh, Amelie Osik has climbed off. Of uh, course, for um, Sunweb, if Ellen van Dijk can get a second here, then she can move up on GC because she's only a few seconds behind second place. These seconds are so uh, vital now. They're so close together, bunched together behind the overall lead of the two podium spots behind number one are available and these seconds can make such a difference well it's a downhill approach and quite a high speed as they come up to this left hander and you can see the Katie Archibald in the red helmet she's very keen on this jersey so she won't be going for the seconds but she'll be going for the points Archibald who got a third yesterday after two fourths the previous day will be looking to try and go better now she's got those red shoes on so she's easy to spot she is a world uh, champion for the Omnium and she's also an Olympic team pursuit champion and this is Danny King on the extreme right in the green helmet. King herself, an Olympic team pursuit champion. And she won that in London in front of her home crowd. Now, this little group has just detached itself off the front of the main bunch. So they're getting close to the line now. Look for the injection of base. Archibald on the extreme right decides that she's going to take them on. On the other side of the roll, brilliant effort here then by the Scott. Has she gone a little bit too early? Archibald burying herself now with the rest right tucked into her wheel. Coming up to the line, Archibald takes it. Jolene Dorr was second, and it looked like Ellen Van Dyke of Team Sunweb getting third. That's confirmed. So that's another useful second there for Van Dyke. Yes, that's that's going to move her up on the GC. And you could see there we had Lucinda Brandt really driving that for Ellen Van Dyke. So it's great teamwork by Sunweb. So that's uh, another second, as I say, as we've got Anna Barnes, who is the leading British rider and she's got a flat tire so she's going to be waiting for the uh, service car to come up she's signaling she wants the team car to come up and uh, change the wheel as quickly as possible so she can get back into the uh, bunch welcome back and uh, you can see elisa longa borghini there with a lot of bottles tucked down her jersey so she's obviously playing a domestic role now she's having a word with the doctor here obviously this is to do with that earlier crash Yes, this is one thing the riders can do. They can go back to the car behind the commissaire and speak to the doctor. Uh, she's obviously taken a bit of strain from that crash. Another abandoned as well. You just saw Vilanda Spore. That's another one that's climbed off as uh, the rider from Bowles Dolman looking across there as we're nearing the start of the second sprint of the day this is at wellsbourne they'll have covered 65 kilometers when they tidy this one up now then remember as i've said to you all along three seconds first two for second one for third and these seconds are so valuable yes that's right and we saw that um ellen van dyke went for the first sprint and i think with amy peters she's also could benefit and hannah barnes if they can get seconds here 
and Katie Archibald will be out to try and add points to the three she got in sprint one because she's in the hunt to try and win the uh, Iceberg Sprints classification. Oh, you can see here we've got a Wiggle High Five driving on the front, followed by Danny King in the green helmet. And you can see Chantal Black there, she's a great lead out, so I'm sure she'll be working for Amy Peters for this intermediate sprint. So here we go, and it's Danny King on the extreme right, but right in the middle, it's the rider from Bowles Dolman here, trying to wind the pace up. That's uh, Amy Peters now taking over. Amy Peters and the winner of the stage yesterday gets that one, picking up uh, three seconds. That's very useful. And in second spot was Katie Archibald. And in third spot was Jolene Dorr, so she'll get the one point. Now that means in the overall standings, it's pretty tight. Jolene Dorr leading with eight, six for Archibald. Klein's got five, and also Amy Peters. She's tying with... Uh, the third place, Klein, on five as well, because she just won that sprint to add points to the previous ones. Yeah, it's like a race within a race here. So, obviously, they're going for the points jersey. And also, though, Amy Peters is going to benefit from getting those valuable seconds. I can tell you, actually, uh, that the three seconds has now elevated her into second place overall, one second ahead of Voss and Hannah Barnes. Now he's an attack beginning to develop. Yeah, that's an Orica Scott girl there, and she's closely tracked there by um, Ludwig, who's wearing the distinctive blue under-23 Women's World Tour uh, jersey. Oh, and she's off. She's off on her own now. She's taken this on. So this rider is in pretty good form at the moment. This is uh, Ludwig, 21 from Denmark, riding on the Cervelo Bigler team. National time trial champion, so she's quite capable of holding a good tempo when she's on her own. Yeah, and she's had a breakthrough year this year. She's, uh, she was third at Trophée de Binda, one of the World Tour races, and everybody's been so surprised that, that she's taken everybody by storm. So Ludwig at the moment is the leader on the road. Well, she's got company. She needed it. Now then, together they can start to work. Now, the company is Gracie Elvin, 28-year-old Australian, on the Orica Scott team. Yeah, and this is very good company. Gracie Elvin recently placed second at the Tour of Flanders, which is probably the biggest one-day race in the women's calendar. This is a very dangerous move. And you saw the caption confirming that there are three riders, here they are, that have got off the front of the peloton as well, and they are trying to get up to the leading two. The three are... Martina Ritter of Drops, Malgozata Jasinska of Silence, and Shara Gillo, who rides on the FDJ. Yeah, this is a dangerous move. Shara Gillo is also a very good rider. She rode uh, with Marianne Voss's team last year, but this year's moved teams to FDJ and is having a chance and an opportunity to ride for herself. She's had a number of top 10 World Tour wins. And it looks like the junction is going to be made here. So a group of five working consistently. This is quite a useful number ahead and all different teams as well. That's right. We, we have some of the major teams missing from here. So Sunweb have, are not in this move. Uh, also, of course, Bowles Dolman's WM3. So it will be interesting to see how long they let them stay out here. Not too much urgency at the front of the peloton at the moment. And they've got one minute and 30 seconds now the leading five and this of course uh, plays nicely into the hands of Cordon who is uh, the leader of the Skoda Queen of the Mountains because none of the five here are a threat it looks like we've got the banana man watching by the side of the road as well got a good spot as well <laughs> so we're heading on then towards this uh, first climb Edge Hill it's a second category ascent and uh, it's actually uh, 0.7 of a kilometer long but it is quite hard yeah, Shara Gillow is a very good climber in this group, and Ludwig, it'll be interesting to see how sprinter Gracie Elvin manages. And uh, near the back, you can see riders uh, from Drops, uh, but they've got a very good player so far in this race, and that's the younger sister of Hannah Barnes, and that's uh, Grace, who's going very, very well. Of course, when the riders are like this in a group of five, not going for the mountain points, it's more important that they really stay together because they're going to profit from riding together as five as they are solo. And, of course, the, uh, the green jersey leader, Nui Adama, is under no threat at all. No, that's right. This is, this is actually a perfect scenario for her. So long as the group doesn't get too big a gap, um, I think she'll be happy with this. So the field just about to cross the line now. And, as I said, it's... Uh, that 0.7 of a kilometer to the summit. And uh, you can see it's pretty hard. They are actually 
looking a little laboured here, but no riders out of the saddle that we've seen so far. You can see um, here next to Gracie Elvin uh, is Rita on the Jops team in the light blue helmet. Uh, she's a very good rider as well. She's um, placed fourth on GC at Grazia Lova recently and also was ninth in the Women's Tour of California. So she's a good little rider for Jops. And it's interesting to see that uh, Jasinska of Silence Pro Cycling, there she is, second position on the inside. Had a good go yesterday, actually, up Gun Hill when she was chasing down uh, Cicchini, the Italian champion, who was ahead of her at the time. Oh, and it looks here as though uh, Ritter's in struggling there. She's dropping off the back of that group. Yep, so they're getting very close now to the top of the climb. None of these riders, as I said, are going to affect uh, Cordon in the uh, tussle for the jersey as the leader of the Queen of the Mountains. But uh, you can see the different styles here now. And Martina Ritter of the drops team has uh, lost contact, so we're down to four. As Ludwig at the front dances on those pedals and looks as though she's setting herself up for the six points. Yeah, and Gracie Elvings is an impressive ride from her, normally known as a sprinter, but of course she did represent uh, Australia at the Olympic Games, which is a very hilly course. And this being a second category ascent, it's, as I said, six for the win. It goes down to one for sixth position. And, of course, here we've only got five riders in the break, which leaves only one point available in the peloton behind, which, of course, Audrey Cordon will be wanting to get. Good crowds here at the top of Edge Hill. It's a famous climb. It's been used in many, many road races over the years. But Ludwig just uh, comes uh, off the bend there to take the six points. And behind her, it is Gillo. Third is Jasinska and Ludwig looking back and no doubt she's waiting for the rest to join up because if they are all together they can work much better. This is Martina Ritter who was dropped quite early on from the drops team so she finishes in fifth position. And what it does mean is there's still one point available and we will wait to see the arrival of the peloton at the top but it won't surprise me if Cordon is not in the hunt to try and get that one point. Oh, you can see how hard this climb is now. Look at those back markers. Oh, really taking some strain. Well, they are reassembling now, so they can start to relay each other. That's what it's all about, just keeping the tempo up. But as you said, look at the contrasting styles. The riders at the back are really, really struggling. And if they don't join up, they could lose a lot of time here. Yeah, I'm surprised to see such a break up here, but it just shows we've got tired legs. It's day three, and these climbs are obviously becoming more challenging. Almost at a standstill then, riders at the uh, at the back. That's how hard it is. And here is the peloton arriving, and it is Cordon that takes the sixth position, so she picks up the one point. There it is confirmed, so she's further increased her lead in the Skoda Queen of the Mountains competition. And you could just see that Neodoma was just on her wheel, just watching, checking what's happening. Well, we've got the two sprints out of the way, Kenilworth and Wellsbourne, and the first climb at Edge Hill. There we are, the profile map showing you that we are approaching the uh, second concluding climb of the day, and that's at Burton Dasset. Yeah, these riders are working really well together. You can see they're all rolling through, taking turns. It's all in their interest to contribute. You can see Bowles Dolman taking an interest there, and uh, also the team of uh, the leader, Nui Adoma, and uh, she's actually getting quite a nice ride here, enjoying the uh, wheels in the peloton and not being stretched, riders not attacking her. So this is the start of the climb of Burton Dasset. I can tell you it is 1.7 kilometers long. It has uh, a second category rating and the average gradient is 5%. Have you ever raced up this one, uh, Sharon? No, I also haven't done this one. <laughs> well, I've uh, raced up Edge Hill, and I've uh, raced up a lot of the climbs in this area, and believe me, they are unforgiving. And you can see there we had Sunweb on the front. Of course, the gap is still quite big, and the, the sprint teams now are going to be wanting to think about chasing this back. Yep, so let's see uh, what the development is on this climb. Let me just confirm once again the... Uh, composition of the leading group as the team of uh, Sunweb are now starting to get organized at the front they're going to be looking after Ellen van Dyke that's right she got third on the stage yesterday so she's very close on GC so they'll definitely be taking care of her so still ahead then it's Cecilia Ludwig Gracie Elvin Martina Ritter Malgozata Jasinska and Shara Gillow 
Yeah, this is an interesting move. It's not the top, top riders, but as I said, there's some really good riders in this group, so they could stand a chance of staying away. And none of them actually uh, are affecting the overall standings. If they could maintain uh, around about one and a half minutes when they got to the finish, they would all move up nicely on the overall GC, but it certainly wouldn't dislodge the overall leader, and that's Nui Adoma. No, that's right, Hugh, but I don't think Nui Adoma would want them to have such a big gap, but I think she'd be happy, you know, if the gap was down to 20 seconds by the finish. As you said, it prevents any brakes going off, so it's easier for her to control the race this way quite a speed that the uh, bunch are tapping out here and there it is confirmed one minute and 45 seconds so they're doing a good job the quintet that are ahead and it is a very very narrow road here isn't it look at this as they're uh, coming up into the Burton Dasset Hills Country Park what a lovely sight that is yeah this narrow road is going to be important for riders to be near the front as they approach this climb so there won't be any moving up at that point and then just crossing over the uh, the motorway here as the riders of uh, Sunweb just freewheeling off the front at the moment and the crowd is starting to build so that indicates that we are getting uh, close to the top you can see here Ritter's looking a little bit more comfortable in this group now so she's found her climbing legs Abby May Parkinson near the back of the group here and also uh, Jenny Karama of WM3 Pro Cycling meanwhile back at the front the five are uh, all content to just sit there and uh, ease their way nearer to the summit riders now trying to get away from the peloton to give themselves an easier ride here yeah you can see here i mentioned before that sunweb weren't represented in that group so it looks like uh, the sunweb driver is trying to get across meanwhile ludwig at the front still uh, finds a very very nice easy pedaling style yeah she's looking very comfortable isn't she and of course they're under no pressure at all are they it's not as though they're contesting any sprints to get points because they're in contention for the overall classification of the mountains no that's right but of course they do want to get up the road and maximize their time gap well we saw last time it was one minute and 45 seconds that's a, a nice advantage when they get over the climb they'll have done 124 kilometers of this stage that's uh, 150.8 yeah, this is still a long climb. We can't see the summit yet. 26 kilometres to go once they have gone across the top of the climb. So if they start to work well together, there is a chance they could actually get to Livington Spa for the sprint and the stage victory. Oh, you can see here the green jersey near Adoma. She's just staying near the front so that she can follow any moves that go. Got, also got Ellen van Dyke here. She's the Sunweb rider on the right coming up. And Ashley Molman, a very good climber in the red helmet. Christine um, Majerus there with the Bowles Dolman's yellow helmet top. You did say that Nui Adoma was a good climber and uh, your call has proved to be spot on over the cattle grid. And you can see the top just ahead now. Ludwig was the rider that was first over the top of Edge Hill. And uh, if she gets this one, she'll have earned 12 points today and she is at the top first so that's 12 points for her and it looked like the rider from drops in second place that's Ritter well Ritter was off the back at the top of Edge Hill but uh, she's made up for it this time getting second now then we wait for the arrival of the bunch and that was Ellen van Dyke the former world time trial champion there who rides on team Sunweb tall strong and powerful and from this shot, it's looking as though it's going to be uncontested. She may well just pedal through with the field in her wheel. Yeah, that's right. And you see how um, narrow roads we've got now, which is favouring the break, because if these girls um, ahead, you know, they can't be seen by the peloton. So it's a good chance for them to stay away. Well, I caught a glimpse there of uh, Van der Breggen, but uh, did you see Cordon? I haven't seen Audrey Cordon yet. I'm sh well... She should hopefully be in this group because, of course, there is this one point still available. So Cordon uh, got the point for six over the top of Edge Hill. Now then, is she going to put herself about here? Can't see her at the moment. It's Majerus in second wheel. Now Cordon is coming through on the left. She's wearing that uh, Queen of the Mountains jersey with the white right sleeve. Yeah, she's obviously very keen on this jersey and she doesn't seem to have too many people contesting her. Now then, she's come to the front, so it's Cordon who we are quite accustomed to seeing cresting the top of the climbs and picking up points every day. Is she going to take it? Oh, it was close. Very, very close. And look, she put her hand up as much as to say, well, why did you do that? 
Now then, we'll have to wait to the caption there, I think, Sharon, but it was Ellen Van Dyke. Yes, Van Dyke took it. Why did she do that? Yeah, I'm not really sure. That's <laughs> not... <laughs> yeah, sometimes you kind of expect you just to get the points when you're not contesting, so it was an interesting move from Ellen Van Dyke, but it might not even have been on purpose. Well, he hasn't done uh, anything to her lead. Cordon is still the overall leader, and uh, she will collect that jersey at the end of the stage in Royal Leamington Spa. Now, these are one or two of the riders right at the back of the group. You can see how it's stretched out, and they've got some work to do then if they want to get back into the uh, business end of the contest that are chasing down the five leaders. Yeah, this climb's definitely done some damage. There's a lot of splintering here. Fragmenting on the climb, it's always the case. You get certain riders that just pick groups that they ride with, and then they work hard and eventually re-establish themselves in the right position. These are the five. These are the different descending skills that we're looking at. Yes, that's right. We've got Shara Gillow in that group. She's a very good descender. Now then, Sharon, the question I've got to ask you, do you think they can stay away? Well, that's a difficult call. It's lacking these big sprint teams who are really going to want it to come down to a sprint. So we're looking at Ale Cipollini, Bowles Dolmans and Wiggle who are going to be after this stage win. We've left the climbs behind us, and the lead was 1 minute and 40 for the five that are ahead. But it is tumbling because the peloton are starting to get themselves organised. And the race is inside the closing 10 kilometres. Yeah, you can see here we've got the big teams who want a sprint here. Sunweb on the front, Wiggle High Five. They're really going to want this to come down to a sprint because, of course, we're chasing cha stage wins now. The GC is probably fixed with Cassie and Eva Doma having such a big lead. 1 minute 42. And as you can see, 22 seconds now. So the uh, big bunch are really getting themselves organised. The rider in the uh, front group that had the most to gain was Ludwig because she started the day ninth overall at 1 minute and 58 seconds. And that is why this group are getting themselves organised. And as you pointed out as well, Sharon, the big teams are going to try and fire off their sprinters at the end. Yeah, now we've moved on to bigger rows. Peloton can see this group ahead and that's going to give them added incentive so I think this could be the end of the day for this break yeah the best uh, scenario would be to be in the narrow rows because out of sight is out of mind but here there they are it's uh, the bunch reeling in their quarry now isn't it it's just a matter of how much longer can they stay ahead looks like Sunweb and Wiggle High Five are working well together on the front here to bring this back kilometers are being ticked off all the time and there's one or two handy sprinters in this group must be thinking very much about a stage victory they'll have all looked at the handbooks and worked out the approach to the line but look at this the gap is being chipped away all the time by the fast moving peloton that's right and of course wm3 with Cathy and eva doma they don't need to do anything now she's sitting so comfortably at the head of the gc so they can just profit from the other teams having to make this chase for the stage win and at the back, at a character almost being at the back, is Anna van der Breggen, the Olympic champion who's had a fantastic year this year. And van der Breggen is a strong finisher, so she may well be in the shake-up. Yeah, it looks like she's maybe just dropping to the back there, maybe to go back to the team car to ask a few questions. Well, their team, very, very strong indeed. And, of course, they've got Christina. Uh, Majerus, the champion of Luxembourg, who's won stages in the past in this tour. She's also been a podium finisher, so surely that's going to be uh, the rider they'll be looking to try and place up near the front. And also Amy Peters, who of course got that brilliant victory yesterday. That's right, and of course we saw Ellen van Dyke finish on the podium yesterday for Sunweb. So on the left you can see her, that's van der Breggen. If you don't recognise the jersey, that is the jersey that uh, is worn by the leader of the World Tour. Five kilometres to go, three miles of racing left. And the front five, well, they're just about to be caught. And so it'll be status quo with them all together. So what kind of tactics can we expect now in the closing stages, Sharon? Well, it's a much less complicated finish uh, to today's stage than the other two stages. So all they've got to worry about is a one right-hand turn 600 metres before the finish. So it's going to be critical for them to all get to that point first. So there's going to be a lot of battles. I'm expecting us to see more sprint trains than the chaotic finish that we've seen on some of the other two stages. Well, van der Breggen has now worked her way right up to the front of the, uh, the group. She's uh, just about going to pass Ludwig. If I ask Ludwig, just slipping further back. And uh, riders some drops near the front as well. 
Yeah, of course, um, Alice Barnes, very fast finisher. So I expect that she could do well on this stage today. And we've got Hannah Barnes too, so Battle of the Barnes sisters. Danny King is also uh, there. And in case you're going to be looking for the British National Championship jersey uh, in the finish, if Anna Barnes is involved, well, she's not wearing that, actually. She is wearing uh, the jersey as the leading British rider, and that's the Adnams' uh, best British rider placed in the race. Yeah, it would also be nice here. We've got some smaller teams who are also quite keen on a sprint finish. Um, of course, the WNT, the other British team racing with drop cycling, and they've got Katie Archibald, who's obviously got fast legs. She's been going for the intermediate sprints. And there's also Orica Scott. Sarah Roy is a very good sprinter in that team. And this Floro jersey of Ale Cipollini, they've got Bastianelli and Chloe Hoskin, are also a very fast sprinter. So it's all to play for today. I think it's going to be a very exciting sprint finish. Bastianelli, a former world champion, 30-year-old Italian. And... Uh, what a brace of sprinters they've got then for Ayla Cipollini with Hosking and Bastianelli, as you mentioned. Looking at the Bowles Dolman's team, we've already mentioned Mazurus and uh, Peters. They're likely to be uh, well to the fore. And then, of course, you've got Giorgia Bronzini, although now we're probably getting more to veteran status. She's been twice a world champion. That's right, and Jolene de Hoor. And what's interesting for the teams is they might not necessarily have decided at the beginning of the stage who they're going to go for in the sprint such a long stage and by this point they'll have communicated via the race radios to each other who's feeling fresh who's feeling good and who really wants to go for the stage win well the field stretching out all across the road here and uh, it's going to be very very exciting this one who's going to put their name on the roll of honor who's going to cover themselves in glory there's a lot of riders in there want this very very much and often some of the teams make the mistake of trying to start the sprint train too early and then just running out of gas just before the finish. So it's going to be seeing lots of battles here for riders to stay at the front, but they don't want to be on the front too early. Well, remember, it's 10 seconds for the win, six for second and four for third. But the way this is uh, shaping up here, it's not going to affect the overall leader. Three yeah. kilometres to go. And you can see Orica Scott now have taken up the... Race at the front. They'll be working for Sarah Roy, I imagine. Lifting the tempo significantly, Orica Scott. Their director sportif is Martin Barras. And their team is Elvin, Crooks, Manley, Nalen and Sarah Roy. And you can see here Sunweb coming up on the right. They're organising themselves. You see all, all four riders together here. I so imagine they'll be working for Ellen van Dyke after her third place yesterday. And she's already uh, picked up a point and a second in uh, the intermediate sprint earlier in the day, and that came at Kenilworth. She also picked up a point as well at the top of the uh, second uh, mountain. Yeah, so she's going to be fighting for a GC place here today. So Van Dyke, very, very strong, former world time trial champion. Keep an eye out for her as they approach the finish, but it's still Orica Scott on the front, trying to stretch the legs of the rest, with Van der Breggen sitting in second position. Yeah, Anna van der Bregen is a very good lead-out rider. We've seen that when she races for the Dutch national team as well. So she'll be working, possibly Christian Majerus or Amy Peters. Two kilometres to go. These kilometres do seem long to me. It's two kilometres to go. They do, and very wide roads, which makes it very difficult for the teams to control. You can see we've got riders coming up on both sides of the road around the traffic island. Now, that's interesting, actually. On the front now, Sharon, is uh, Canyon Shram. I think that's Lisa Brenner, closely followed by um, Hannah Barnes. So she's putting herself in a very good position here. And they've got in their team the Italian champion as well, Elena Cecchini, that we saw up the road yesterday. So Barnes out to try and figure in this one and taking her place nearer the front. Yeah, you can see here we've got Elena Cecchini and Trixie Warak. They'll be protecting Barnes for this stage finish. So that would be a lovely uh, finish, wouldn't it, if Barnes could clinch this? She won the last stage in the Tour a couple of years ago in Hemel Hempstead. But you uh, can see the urgency here as you look across the field. It really is beginning to ramp up the pace. Yeah, on the right-hand side here, we've got a very good train from Sunweb with Lucinda Brandt, Ellen Van Dyke and Leah Kirchman. Leah Kirchman, also a very good sprinter. Yep, Kirchman has uh, been on the podium in stage finishes. So that's another name we can throw into the mix. And looks as though we're going to get a slight attack on the right. No, in fact, it's Canyon Shram trying to make sure that they have got a handle on the front of the field here. 
So it's a matter of one of the teams trying to keep their hand on the tiller so that they can launch their sprinter as he gets right up to the line. You can see a few um, Ale Cipollini riders coming in through here. Not as organised, though. They don't have any sprint train going. All the teams here anxious to try and keep a grip on the front of the group. And there is the OVO Energy one kilometre sign. So we're inside the concluding 1,000 metres now. Yeah, they're going to be really fighting to get to the front. As I said, we've got this very important right-hand bend coming, so they're going to be racing for that one. And I think that's Lucinda Brandt on the front there. As I said before, I think very good technical rider. She's just pulled off. She's done her turn now, so that's her day over. The race finishing on the parade here in Royal Leamington Spa. It's the first time that the Tour has been here. And they're going to be treated to a fantastic finish to tidy up this, the longest stage of 150.8 kilometres. It looks like we've got Wiggle High Five on the front now, really driving it. That could be Georgia Bronzini. And I think maybe that's Audrey Cordon could be doing a lead out there for Wiggle High Five. Oh, there's a crash there. Oh, my goodness, oh, mate. And bad. that's Mariana Voss that's gone down. Well, that's one of the big sprinters that will not be contesting the finish. And look at this now, right at the front. Hoskins in the yellow and on the far side. It is Barnes trying to come through on the inside. But it's the power of Hoskins, of Ella Cipollini in the yellow that's going to get it. Hoskins going to take this from Barnes. Very close on the line. Hoskins takes it from Barnes. The front view showed us that they were quite close. But I think there was quite a gap between them on the line. It looked like Van Dijk at Sunweb getting third. Well, that's an incredible win for Chloe. She's new to this team, and that will be their first World Tour win. So that's fantastic for Ale Cipollini. Look, she just times this perfectly. She just comes through. Bronzine is fading here, and she's very clear of Alice Barnes there. Yeah, look at that. Incredible. Well done. That's a fantastic ride by Chloe Hoskins. So what a finish and a great day for the British as well. Alice Barnes second in sixth place. Anna Barnes in seventh. Katie Archibald. Chloe Hosking clinched the sprint to the line ahead of Alice Barnes and Ellen Van Dyke. Georgia Bronzini claimed fourth, Christine Majerus fifth, and Hannah Barnes and Katie Archibald made it three Brits in the top seven. A great performance from Chloe Hosking to claim the win on stage three of the OVO Energy Women's Tour. I finished second a lot this year, so to cross the line first, um, it was just a really nice moment for myself and the team. and. Um, you know, I said to the team this morning, I said, I want to sprint and then to, um, yeah, come up with the goods. It's sort of, you know, it's it's hard for your teammates to work 100% for you when you keep finishing second. So to finally win is um, really nice. Audrey Cordon keeps hold of the Skoda Queen of the Mountains jersey for another day. But there's a change of leader in the Iceberg Sprints classification. Jolene Dorr taking the jersey after picking up points on both today's sprints. The Adnam's Best British Rider classification is becoming the Battle of the Barn Sisters. Alice reclaiming the jersey from Anna. Katazina Nuiadoma keeps the lead in the Wiggle Points classification and the race overall. She'll be wearing the Ovo Energy Green jersey for at least another day. But her advantage at the top of the GC has been trimmed. She now leads Ellen van Dyke by 1 minute 43 seconds. Further back are Alice and Anna Barnes alongside Mariana Voss. Well, we wondered if this one would come down to a bunch sprint here in Leamington, and it did, but we didn't know until the last few kilometres. What a chase back. It was a very hard chase from all of the teams to bring it back for a uh, bunch sprint. So we knew it was a potentially going to be a bunch sprint, but in that kind of excitement to come down in the last, you know, five kilometres and then the, uh, the sprint was the best of the best. Yeah, Chloe Hoskins, she's waited a long time to get that victory. We could see what it meant to her. Yeah, we absolutely could. I mean, she's won a lot of big races and she's won some races this year, but I think this one for her, we could see was super emotional and she really, really wanted it. It means a lot to her. Nasty cr uh, crash in the last 10 kilometres. Danny King going down, Mariana Voss going down. Let's hope we see them back on their bikes tomorrow. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the key rider for uh, the leader who's Kasia Nuadoma is Mariana Voss and she came down pretty hard. She's got a lot of skin off and I think Kasia Nuadoma is going to have a really hard day tomorrow if she is one rider down in Mariana Voss. Well, fingers crossed, of course. We switch to Derbyshire tomorrow, Chesterfield, the start and the finish. A really tough day in the saddle to look forward to there. Charlie Webster will bring you all the action. I'll see you in London on Sunday. Bye for now.